Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at an, exa at an example of Cosette syndrome detection when we're sending a message. Let's suppose that our messages originally start up out as um, just three bits long with ones and zeros. And we're gonna be thinking about arithmetic mod two. So the first thing we're gonna do with this message is we pad it with some zeros. We double its length, so we have some zeros down here. And then we have some kind of matrix here, which we have carefully chosen. Um, and this matrix is a padding matrix. It's going to supply some padding. So if we multiply our, um, it's gonna uh, change this padding down here, so these zeros to something else. Okay, so, when we multiply, notice the top remains the same, and that's because we basically have an identity matrix right here, and and then we have zeros over here. That's going to enable the top part of the message to be the same as original, I mean, as originally planned. But then basically what this matrix does when we multiply is it, it um, changes the zero padding to something else. Okay, then what happens? In transmission, let's just assume that one bit is changed. There's some kind of noise in the channel and maybe just one bit is changed. Then the question is, which bit is it and when can we detect it? Okay, so um, let's suppose, for instance, that from here, the noise in the channel that it's being sent over has changed this bit, make, making it as changing it from a zero to a one. Now, Notice we're working in mod two arithmetic. And we can think about block multiplication of matrices here um, with this block, this block, this block, and this block. And if we were to take an inverse of this um, matrix thinking about block multiplication, we'd swap these two positions, make these guys right here out the off diagonals, the negatives of what they were. Um, uh, and, um, and then you'd multiply, and then what you would do is um, you would um, um, multiply or divide by, normally you would divide by the determinant, but in this case you'd multiply by um, a series of matrix multiplications, so that, that kind of equal the determinant. So like this times this minus that times that, and you then you'd take the inverse of that and then multiply it through to every part instead of dividing by the determinant like the normal way. So it's a little bit offset, but in the process, notice what happens. What are you multiplying by there? It's actually this times this minus this times this, which is just the identity matrix itself and the inverse of the identity is just the identity. So really what we get is we get something interesting since negative is the same as positive mod two. Really, this is the exact same matrix as it's owned as its determinant. So we can use the padding matrix in multiple ways. Okay, so let's suppose this is the output of, um, so this is the out, this is, uh, you know, the some message right here, and it's going to be in some coset of the uh, possible images that we'd actually have from padding. So from padding our images you know like this is an example of an image that happens from the padding matrix and um the um <clears throat> uh, right here and uh the messages that we have coming um coming in initially have zeros before the padding so you take basically what you do is you take the image of everything that has zeros at the bottom originally and you look at the subspace of all of those of all of those guys um and that's those are the possible things um that we that we'd want the possible nice messages that we want um so it forms a subgroup of um in this case this would be uh, z mod 2z um uh, cross itself going six times. So a Cartesian product with itself six, uh, with uh, six different components. And so we could write that out as um, Z mod two Z six. So this is kind of like um, the codomain, right? The codomain of um, the padding map. 
but um, there's a subspace of this, which happens to be the image of, um, of all the messages that have something here and then zeros on the last part. So you take the image of all of that, the range of that um, in the, you know, with the matrix A. Um, so, uh, so the image of just, uh, of like, where is this subspace, the subspace that just has um, zeros over here and anything else over here, its image in here lies in here and it's a group. And maybe we'll call that group G, okay? Or maybe even, because it's a subgroup of this, let's call it H, okay? So it's some, so the image of this is some subgroup H in here. And we just want to know like what um, R lies in this codomain, but it doesn't lie in H. Um, it, and, it could be off. Um, it might not actually be in one of these things of H. And that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. We wonder, well, is it um, is it an element of H plus or shifted by um, maybe like E1, like E1 being like, like a one and all zeros down here. So is it in H plus E1? Then if we know that, then we could say, well, it's probably off in the first guy. Just the first bit was changed if it's in that coset. If it's, is this guy in H plus E2, then it would be off the second one. Or is it in H plus E3 and so forth. Um, and then we can kind of detect how, what, what error was made by the noise in the channel. So how are you going to see which one it was in? Well, we can use the fact that A is equal to its own inverse. So we can kind of go backwards and say, okay, um, what we'd, um, well, if, if R is in like, let's say if, if R is in H plus E2, like if it was in here, what would happen? Then, um, <clears throat> then as we apply A inverse, it will be the same thing as applying A really. Um, <clears throat> and what does A do to things in H or A inverse to things in H? It brings you back to things with zeros at the bottom here. So, um, our vector r is going to be something in here plus something in here. And the thing in here will just come back to be zeros. The thing in E2, well, it's going to be, since A is the same as A inverse, it'll actually be the image of E2 in A or, or A inverse, which is the same. The image of E2, um, the image of E2 actually looks like um, uh, it's this column right here, the second column. Now notice that the bottoms of each of these columns are distinct. They're different from each other. That's going to help us in the error detection, detection process. So when we say um, A inverse, which is the same as A times the received message, um, we only have to look at the bottom three entries. And notice that these bottom three entries tell us, since they're not zeros, they're offset for, by zeros by one thing. It's offset by this, which is the image of E2. So um, even in, in the inverse, kind of going back, um, uh, which um, tells us that um, we were in E2 over here and we're going back here. We were actually over here. So we're like that far away from being zeros, which means if we were off in one bit, we added by uh, this guy because we're only adding by one column is what we're kind of thinking to be offset by uh, because we're adding only by one of these elements, E2 and E1, and their images are just columns. So if we only added by one column to be offset, we added by this column right here, meaning that um, that it came from E2, which meant that R was E2 away from um, being a good message, which tells us that the error in transmission was in that, that one. So we have to change that to be 101 to get back to the original, which is what the original was. So this is just a little um, example of uh, that kind of gives you a feel for an idea of how you might want to build a padding matrix um, for um, air transmission um, in a setup to uh, detect uh, a syndrome for the received message. Um, the syndromes are just cosets. What coset are you off, um, off by? Thanks for watching.